It is a sound heard daily by more than a billion people across the globe. For Muslims, it is a call to prayer, a call to success, a time to join together as one for the sake of God. Communities from every walk of life have heard this call, but nowhere has it been heard louder than in the African-American communities of America. Their story is an incredible 80-year tale of perseverance, strength, and sacrifice while traveling the path to Islam. In the early 1930s, a mysterious figure named W.D. Farrard began teaching a young African-American man named Elijah Poole some concepts of the religion. We hate ourselves. This man would change his name to Elijah Muhammad, and they would form an organization called the Nation of Islam. Who puts one of us against the other? Some of the nation's most influential people would emerge from that movement, such as Malcolm X. You haven't done the right thing by my people. And because you haven't done the right thing by my people, now I got to do the right thing by you. Muhammad Ali. Whatever the punishment, whatever the persecution is for standing up for my religious beliefs, even if it means facing machine gun fire that day, I will face it before denouncing Elijah Muhammad and the religion of Islam. I'm ready to die. And many others. But it is two men who have made the biggest impact. These two men have achieved incredible feats against all odds, becoming leaders of legendary status. Their names are Imam W. Dean Muhammad and Minister Louis Farrakhan. You can't go before the world strutting blackness. You have to go before the world displaying wisdom and righteousness. Needs leadership. And I'm going to make my contribution. The history of Imam Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan is a fascinating story of two great African American religious leaders. Both of them came into prominence in the Nation of Islam under the leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I have been teaching that one day. You will wake up to know. Imam Muhammad was his son. He was called defiant, often disagreeing with the religion his father was proclaiming. At times, he was discommunicated from the group, unable to even speak with Nation of Islam members. Minister Farrakhan was different. He was Elijah Muhammad's greatest student. He was charismatic and articulate, with a level of intelligence profound as any. Then the people began to say, yes, yes, yes. He studied Elijah's every word and loved him like a father. In 1975, when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad passed away, it was Muhammad who was elected to leadership of the Nation of Islam. He immediately began making changes to bring all Nation of Islam members in accordance with mainstream Islamic beliefs. He changed the name of the group to the World Community of Al-Islam in the West and began teaching the tenets of Al-Islam. Although an estimated 1.5 million followers made this conversion, everyone wasn't ready to let go of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's profound teachings. In 1978, Minister Louis Farrakhan split from Imam Muhammad to rebuild the Nation of Islam. See, we don't speak of Elijah Muhammad as dead. We don't say the late Elijah Muhammad. How could the man be late when his wisdom is so on time? His success would be overwhelming.
In the name of Allah, the For years, these two great Muslim leaders would be divided. Uh, Muslims believe in the oneness of, of God, the oneness of society. Each in stark contrast to the other. That kills our grandmothers, kills our babies, shoots us down. Still, they shared a common thread. We are raised up to show the world what righteousness looked like. Yes, sir. A bond that could never be separated, no matter the differences, no matter the time. In February 2002, these two great leaders came together in Los Angeles, California. Fittingly, it would be at Juma Prayer during Savior's Day weekend. Thousands would be in attendance as Imam W. Dean Muhammad would lead a historic Juma prayer. The two leaders would join in Salat. A sight seldom, if ever seen, by the American public. Following the service, each of these leaders would address those in attendance, showing a powerful display of respect and solidarity. So Islam today is off the straight path, and some are trying to get back to the straight path and making a mess of it. And they're making a grotesque image of what Islam really is. The following day, Minister Louis Farrakhan and Imam W. Dean Muhammad would meet again, this time at a local television studio, where for the first time in history, they would be interviewed together and answer questions which had been discussed for decades. I mean, there have been, for the last several years, attempts to, to reconcile uh, these two uh, groups or brothers of ours and uh, what has taken it so long? Muslim News Magazine is now proud to present in its entirety this historic interview between these two great leaders and the electrifying Juma prayer service which preceded it. Please enjoy.